Hello, folks, and welcome to High Society with Paxton Quigley. And I've got some good news for you today. I, I, at least I hope it's good news for people. 2020 was a breakout year for legal cannabis sales across the United States. It hit a record of, and you can imagine this, $17.5 billion in 2020. And that was a 46% increase from 2019. So can you imagine, just think about it, what is it going to be like in 2021? I'm sure there are a lot of people that are saying, oh my God, I got to get into this business because it's making a lot of money. And I certainly under, understand that. Now, to change the subject, folks, since 1987, the United States has formally recognized the month of March as National Women's History Month. It also is celebrated in the United Kingdom and Australia. I don't know why it isn't in France, but that's a whole another question we could have another time. And it corresponds with International Women's Day, which is on March 8th. Now, every woman has a story to tell. And frankly, I have to say this, the world hasn't given women their due. You may be surprised to learn that women hold 36% of executive positions in the cannabis industry. And maybe even more importantly, a staggering 63% of executive positions are in marijuana testing labs around the country. 63% of women are in, as I said, the marijuana testing laboratories. Now, interestingly though, when compared to other industries, female executives are far less represented, which surprised me. Cannabis seems to be, I gotta say, the exception to the rule. So with us today to talk more about this and about other issues facing what I must admit is the, the dynamic cannabis industry is Jean Sullivan. Ms. Sullivan is the chief inspiration officer of Arcview Ventures. I love that. I want to be an inspiration officer. And you'll have to tell me how you came up with that title because it's great. And she's also co-founder of the Arcview Collective Fund. And the New York Hall of Science recently honored Jean for her work for inspiring girls and women in science, technology, engineering, math, and also STEM. Jean Sullivan, welcome to High Society with Paxton Quigley. Thank you, Paxton. I love the data that you shared and also your enthusiasm for women and for women finding their way in the business world. You know, just to share one more critical point is that you know this, women have always had a hard time raising capital, only 2.2% of all venture financing. We wanna be different and make that change in the cannabis industry. And I'm thrilled that we have some good numbers showing our place in this cannabis industry. Well, I'm so happy to, to hear about that. But first, I've got to ask you, who came up with the title Inspirational Officer? Because I love it. You may use my material because you know what? I believe it's about people helping people. I be, believe it's about women supporting women. And I love to inspire people. You know what? I am blown away myself and inspired by the great effort it takes to be a business owner or an entrepreneur. I'm amazed by stories, in fact, of people who really don't have necessarily all the book-like credentials, but they do it anyway, both in our business and in many businesses. I'm amazed and blown away by companies that can scale from just a piece of paper. So I, it's a two-way street. And so I'm just thrilled to offer that to women and men, a few good men, I like to say, in the cannabis industry now. <laughs> we, we need more men. I don't know. Maybe we have to push them out. I don't know. So it takes men with both their power and the money to support us as women. We want that. We want enlightened men who know how to teach us, 
to support us, to help us during our failures and successes. And the research shows this, that women need the sponsorship of men to bring them into those roles. Uh, you know, we know the answers. The research has been done. I've been a longtime member of the Harvard Kennedy Women's uh, Leadership Board. And the seminal research has been done that shows what's wrong and how to fix it. Now let's mm. fix it. Mm. Now tell us about the Women's Inclusion Network. What are its goals and how can women as well as men join the network? That's great. So yes, we do allow a few good men to come <laughs> to our tent. But let me share this. First of all, ArcView is a more than 10-year-old organization. Steve D'Angelo and Troy Dayton, two pioneers of the business, saw before most that investors would want to convene. And they created a fabulous organization, a business that put companies on our stage. Uh, in the last many years, we've done five or six big events, in-person events. And so these companies would be on our stage. And because of that, our big ecosystem of investors have invested more than $300 million in just about every really? cannabis company there is. So this past year, of course, really showed who can win during tough times. And we have a new fabulous female CEO, Kim Kovacs, who came in because Troy was ready for some new adventures. And Kim is very high idea for you, also an experienced investor and entrepreneur. And so we have created a number of digital platforms over this past year to continue to educate and showcase companies. Well, over the last few years, a few of us said, hey, Troy, when he was CEO, let's bring in the women. Let's aggregate. You know, Troy, women want to get together for lunch or breakfast, communicate, uh, uh, share with each other resources, connect. And he said, make it happen. And we did. Really? So during the in-person events over the last many years, we would gather at lunch or cocktail hour. Uh, the Women Inclusion Network was formed formally. You have to join as a member. It's a small entry fee. And then we put on a number of events every month that do several things. One, showcase the companies, showcase each other, something called Tales from the Top, where we pick dynamic women to tell their story because that's what people want. They want somebody, a role model. Hey, this person did this. I was with a fabulous woman entrepreneur who's really built a heck of a business. I said, how'd you do that? What's your background? You know what she told me? I was a dental hygienist for 15 years. I said, what? She had no real formal business training or financial training. She's built a magnificent CBD business, complete with distribution as well as great products. See, that's where I'm in awe. That's where I am inspired. So we have pulled together these women and men can join too. And we certainly have a few. And so how interesting to show them the way to share with each other how to do it how to teach each other what's going on in the business by showcasing. So a number of programs, both advocacy, mentorship, and showcasing of companies. I'm proud that we've pulled that together. And we have now more than 120 women and men as part of this. Now tell us how we can join it. How can women join it as well as men? What do they do? How much do they pay? I assume right now you're doing a lot of Zoom meetings uh, because we can't all to be together anymore. And I hope that will change in the next uh, you know, six months. Uh, tell us a little bit uh, about that. I think that's important for, for our listeners to hear how much it costs and, and sure. are there any duties that people have to do, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe even mention a couple of the company's names Sure. and describe them, that would be really interesting. There's no duties. It's just participation as one's time allows. It's a simple membership fee of $500 a year or close to it. It's easy to sign up. Uh, it's, we, you could go to the arcviewgroup.com and click on the WIN, Women Inclusion Network 
link and it's all right there. We welcome women and men to join us and we're doing some wonderful, vibrant things. Now, here's another example of how we're showcasing women and that women are both part of this as well as speak to this group, both as members and as us showcased CEOs. We have invested, so, so a piece of this is we have also formed something called the Arcview Collective Fund. This is a very interesting, unique uh, fund. It's a hybrid of both an angel network and a classic fund. In other words, we have called capital and we invest in both uh, female founded as well as uh, you know, uh, other uh, companies. And here's what's neat though. We have a focus on something called DNI, diversity and inclusion. So we are looking for diverse business owners and entrepreneurs. That's important. Let me tell you why. Recall a few minutes ago, I mentioned how the research really showcases what we should do. They have figured this out, why there aren't, why it is hard to get investment as well as uh, you know, how to get investment. It takes women and men with an eye, with a mindset toward opening the door to a diverse audience of business owners, women and people of color to come in and present their companies. We have that door open. So we have that kind of a focus looking for those women and diverse business owners. And we've made several investments. Let me tell you about a few of them. One yes, is that'd be great. a fabulous woman in the Bay Area who's founded and now runs as CEO a really interesting delivery company called Sava, S-A-V-A. And she is not about the fastest delivery. She's about scheduling a delivery for you, an e-commerce platform where you can pick and choose a variety of fabulous products. Uh, certainly many are female focused, but not all. And then <clears throat> uh, has a curated set of products. And then you can schedule when your delivery is. So let's say it's convenient for a window between, you know, two and four tomorrow afternoon. It's delivered by somebody that she has vetted. So you trust that delivery dr driver following all the COVID rules too. Well, here's what's really cool to tell you. Guess what happened in 2020? Due to COVID, our business was deemed from illegal to essential. So those dispensary oh. and delivery companies are essential businesses. So Sava has thrived during shutdown through offering a really trusted delivery and e-commerce service. Dispensaries in our business have been thriving because they know how to do curbside service or advanced ordering if you couldn't go into the dispensary. So it's been a really great time for our business. Now I wanna ask you, how did she come up with the idea of doing this delivery service? Yes. I mean, obviously she was doing something totally different. Uh, uh, did she research uh, that area and find that uh, uh, it, it, it was so-called missing it and really wasn't good? What did she do? Uh, yes. Tell us how she came up with that yes. idea. Yes, first of all, you're right. She does not have a background again in finance, but she's a go-getter, she's smart. And she knows how to look left and right and look out over time. So the Bay Area does have uh, other delivery services, but a lot of them are about fast, get it to you in an hour, that sort of thing. She wanted to build a e an e-commerce system that had beautiful curated products that were skewing towards women, that women that would be a magnet for women. So first of all, she saw that opportunity to build these beautiful products that women would want. And then she saw an opportunity to give them what, what women want, especially a trusted driver. So she vets all her drivers. She knows all her drivers. She knows how to, uh, she knows that her client base didn't care about getting something in an hour, but getting something when they needed it, when it was convenient made it easy, 
made it simple. And so she just saw that she could fulfill a gap that others hadn't. And she's really thriving and doing well. And she's been very focused on the Bay Area, which as you know, has many, many cities and towns. So she's yes. done it in an area that was manageable and she is going to expand to Southern California, but doing it all very carefully. So <clears throat> she knows how to manage that business. Then she knew to go out and find some great investors of which I'm proud were one of those investors. So she has a nice investor base by which has helped her achieve the technology platforms and the people to drive this business. So it's just a matter of being aware of the gaps and filling them. How, how long has she been in the business now? Yes, now she's been actively about three years and just doing better than ever. We just got her year end report and really surpassing her goals. So there's one example. Let me give you a couple more that are just so yes. fascinating. And you want me to stick with the women-founded companies in light of our yes. subject matter? Yes, definitely, definitely. So, so about three years ago, I speak at a lot of conferences in our business. And this really dynamic woman approached me. She said, Jean, I'd like to get to know you. Well, what do you know, Charlotte? So I met this really quite fabulous Charlotte Hanna. And she uh, said, Jean, I need you. I need you as an advisor to guide me. Would you be willing to be my advisor? <clears throat> and she wanted to go after, and in fact, had already applied for three licenses in the state of Massachusetts. Now she's a, a Brooklynite, so she's a New Yorker. She has a really strong real estate background. She was at Goldman Sachs in one of her past uh, professional tours. But she knew that Massachusetts was gonna be a fabulous a community for cannabis. And as you know, they are adult use. So that happened over the last couple years. So she applied, she did all the rigors, which is very hard to get your first provisional. And then you have to build out the license. In this case, it was a retail dispensary in Great Barrington, which is a Western Massachusetts, wonderful area in the Berkshires a great community and built that. She went out for financing and we said, let's look at it for the fun. So we, along with some very substantial investors, invested in her and uh, she opened at Labor Day of this past year. I was there for the opening. It's a beautiful, beautiful dispensary. She's a go-getter. She's hired fabulous people of color to help her build this business. And she believes not only in supporting women, but to supporting a community that has really suffered at the hand of the stigma. So she's, she's aimed to fix that. And now she's starting a cultivation, which is pretty exciting. So we just funded her for that along with others. And then she'll also do manufacturing. So all three licenses. And then she will also do distribution, which is very important. So there's another example. Wait, wait, I got to tell you, we've already interviewed her. Isn't she something? Yes, yes. It, 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 it's, it, it was, I wouldn't say shocking, but it was wonderfully surprising that she went from <laughs> a totally different field into becoming an entrepreneur. I and, know. And, and, and that's something that a lot of women don't think that they can do that and take that step. So that's a wonderful story. Tell us another story. Yes. So I was a longtime investor in technology for many years, 25 years. I was a general partner of a fabulous fund in New York City. And uh, so I really came into the cannabis industry seeking what are the great tech platforms that could serve this? Because here again is another big gap. Almost every a cannabis business owner has had to seek technology that could serve their business because the traditional tech companies weren't playing in this space for many odd reasons, especially related to the stigma. Go figure. So <laughs> certainly there's some, but not many. So a lot of these platforms had to be reinvented for the cannabis industry. It's the oddest thing, Paxton, I must tell you. So uh, there's uh, 
so a lot of the work that's being done is on done with whiteboards and Excel spreadsheets. Being a technologist and having invested in more than a hundred tech companies, I'm looking for them. And we found a fabulous company that was co-founded by a woman, Karen Mayberry. She'd be good for your show in a company called Trim, T-R-Y-N. So instead of using Excel spreadsheets and a whiteboard to chart what's going on in the grow house, this is all being done through a mobile app so that you can actually schedule your personnel, schedule what's going on in the cultivation. Again, fascinating. And she and her husband have put this together. We invested as well as other terrific institutional investors. And they're on their way with some magnificent MSOs, multi-state operators as clients and more to come. And see, it's complicated because every state, most states have a system embedded that reports back what's sold and how. In California, it's called metric. Same with Massachusetts and several other states. So that software system can't be a standalone. It has to relate to that metric system. They figured out how to do that. So it's a strong, interesting company on their way to build out more of a footprint. So there's one more example, so interesting. So what do you think is going to happen in the next five years in terms well, of the industry? Uh, one, in terms of women being more involved, and two, where do you think it's going to go? Is there any specific uh, direction, or is it going to be going all over the place, and, 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 and uh, we, don't even, we can't even imagine where it's going to be going? Well, remember my title about being inspirational? Uh, my crystal ball did arrive by FedEx last night. I know where oh. it's going to go, so I <laughs> love it. I love sharing my view on the world, but it's an informed view. I follow this day by day. So I follow what's going on in the state regulatory world and in the federal legalization situation. Let me give you a few headlines. So it was our lucky turn when not only the November election uh, headed towards a democratic Senate but then the Georgia election really sealed the deal on making a Democratic Senate with my very own Senator, Chuck Schumer, being the majority leader. He is dedicated to creating federal legalization, or at least something that's called the Moore Act. Now, Kamala Harris was the Senate co-sponsor of the Moore Act, so that's good because we want her to make sure that, that Joe Biden is fully informed and on board. And the world knows, traditionally, he hasn't been that fierce advocate. And so we want him to be as enlightened as possible. Jumping to that, he has said that he will sign a bill that does come across his desk. Well, let me give you a little inside baseball on what those bills are all about. So sure enough, that uh, Chuck Schumer created his own bill. These all have funny acronyms. <clears throat> his is called the MFOA, do you love it? The Marijuana Freedom and Opportunity Act. <laughs> and that is being merged right now into the MORE Act, Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act. So they're being converged, that's good. And he has really made sure that this bill has decriminalization. Do you know that we still arrest more than 600,000 people, many of those people for nonviolent drug crimes, just mere drug possession of marijuana? This is craziness. He wants to stop that and make it decriminalized. And so that's important. So, uh, so Senator Schumer pulled together Cory Booker, who's the fabulous Senator from New Jersey, and Rob Wyden, who's also very enlightened, the Oregon Senator, and has created a unified discussion draft pushing for this. <clears throat> and he knows, Senator Schumer knows, that the racial injustice issues is a really core and deep issue for our country and provoked by the stigma of cannabis between arrests between not allowing people of color to come in. You know, if you have a felony, you can't even 
uh, apply for a license. So we want expungement to happen in many things. So Senator Schumer's goal is a real nod to this criminal justice reform that we need. So we're very hopeful. Now, guess what? Congress and the Senate are pretty busy doing a few other things, in case you didn't notice. <clears throat> yes. Certainly immigration effort, certainly the rollout of the vaccine, certainly COVID relief and all that. But we are hopeful and they have said that they believe they can make all this happen before the 2022 uh, midterm elections because they're worried they might just have two years to make things happen. Now here's where I've had to stay open and flexible. I always thought until now that something called safe banking was gonna happen. And I thought it would happen even last year. And again, I'm hopeful it could happen this year. Paxton, who doesn't want safe banking? <laughs> who doesn't want people like Andrea Brooks of Sava or Charlotte Hanna of the Community Growth Partners, her wonderful rebel, to go right to her bank at Chase or Citibank or Wells Fargo and make deposits. But today, most of those federally chartered banks will not take those deposits from the cannabis industry. Again, this is craziness. This has caused a, caused a hardship. Many business owners have to pay their people in cash. Many companies even pay their state and federal taxes in cash. This is complete nonsense. So wow, say, I don't think most people know about that. No, they that's, need that's to extraordinary. Know. It is, and it's been that way for years. And also, there's a really quirky tax issue called 280E that won't even allow business owners to deduct ordinary and reg regular business expenses, just cost of goods. So all that needs reformation. Now, safe banking is thought to be ahead of like this more and federal legalization issue to be passed. But it's become complicated and here's why. During a Republican Senate, Senator Crapo of Idaho was the chairman of the banking committee. And he was totally against letting even safe banking come to the floor. Now that we have a democratic Senate, the heads of those committees are replaced by Democrats. And so uh, now in this case, we have Sherrod Brown, the Senator from Ohio as head of the banking. But guess what? He's not pounding on the table saying, I'm gonna make this happen. And he has tied safe banking, he's for it, but he hasn't put a big rush. And as I said, pounding ahead for it. And he has tied it to sentencing reform now we need sentencing reform, but we don't want to complicate it. So I'm a little disturbed by that. And now I see it slowing down and not necessarily happening fast. And the street talk is both of those bills might be converged into one. So let's see. The, the future is, let's see how fast Senator Schumer can make this happen. Let's see if Senator Sherrod Brown from Ohio can make his banking uh, reform around safe banking happen. And that's something to watch on both of those. Now, let me tell you, if either or both of those do happen, guess what? Don't stand by the door. Because now back to your wonderful numbers that you explained, going toward 19 billion, it is on a march, this industry, to 35, 40 billion just over the next few years. And so more and more states are passing legislation Something else I love to share that I had to learn that I didn't know. You know how the great West Coast states all created this adult use, California, Nevada, Washington, Oregon. Why aren't the East Coast states like that? Do you know why? No. It's because we do not have a citizen's ballot initiative except for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The people were allowed to put that on the ballot because that was in their constitution going way back. But most of the East Coast states are legislatively bound. So the legislatures have to create those laws. Well, guess what? New York, my state, and I'm in New York City. We are finally coming around to that. Governor Cuomo 
finally wants that to happen after many years and a lot of arguments. And so a lot of people are against it. The stigma is upon many, but finally, certainly it's polling. In fact, the latest numbers say polling across the US, 75% of the citizens of the US want reformation, taxation, legalization of cannabis, thank God. And in New York, the people want it. And in fact, the city of New York is the largest illicit market in the world. And that's because it's been very organized under the radar marketplace. Well, let's bring that into the open. Let's regulate it, let's tax it, and let's create tax revenues, wealth, and wellness for people. So it has to be built into the budget, which it is. It's something, uh, Cuomo's bill is called the CRTA. It has a lot of social justice in it, meaning some of the funding of this will go to fix some of the wrongs. And it's finally going to happen in the month of April. We're quite sure of that. It's gonna take many months to roll it out. We only have 10 licenses in the entire state of New York. So we're very- That's all, that's only all. 10? 10 licenses. Each license wow. can grow, extract, and have four dispensaries. So imagine that in a state of 20 million people, imagine if there were only 40 drug stores in the entire state. That's what we've got today. It's just a medical market with very limited set of products, no flour, no edibles. So a very limited subset of products. So that means that New Yorkers have got to get out and vote on this issue. Otherwise, well, nothing will happen. Here's what's Am happening. I correct? We don't even get to vote. Now we just have to let our state and local legislators, our state legislators know we want this, but that's been said. And so now that is happening in the state legislature. So people can speak up, but they don't really have a vote uh, because we just don't have that kind of citizen's ballot. So your state, get to know and write to and call your state, but You'll see the action start to happen. New Yorkers will see that happen, happening starting now and in April. So it'll be part of the budget process. And then they'll create the regulation so people can apply for a license. And we're quite confident it'll be far more than just 10 or a limited set. Interesting. Now, one final question. And please, let's see if we can make it brief. I mean, everything, you've got so much information, we could probably go on for hours and hours. What about the South? The South seems to be behind when it comes to uh, legalization. Well, they are behind, but see, here's the nice part if the Moore Act does pass. It throws that legislation to the states. So if you want it or don't want it in Mississippi or Texas, then you don't have to have it. Let every state figure out what's right for their citizens. Well, that's that's a, a kind way to say that. You know, I, I wish we could talk longer, but uh, we can't, unfortunately. I'd love to have you back in, in a, a, let's say, in, in five months, uh, especially if uh, there's more to talk about in terms of, of not only legalization, but uh, voting in various states, because we have people listening to us from at practically every state in the union. And, and, and so we would, we uh, here would, would like to support uh, that effort uh, this year and for the coming years. And we really appreciate uh, having you on. Uh, is there any kind of uh, website that people can go to, to find out more information about what your organization is doing? Thank you. Organizations. Certainly I'll look to the ArcView group. It's actually, www.arcviewgroup.com. We welcome that. I welcome anyone who's listening to connect with me on LinkedIn or Clubhouse. We're doing a lot of Clubhouse events. I like to connect and support people. I want to hear from you if you want to be an investor, if you want to be one of the people in our WIN, Women Inclusion Network group, if you want to be a company that we take a look at. So all that's very interesting to us. 
Thank you so much, Pat. Oh, you're welcome. I should tell you, I, I own an organic food supermarket in Palo Alto. And about, uh, it was maybe two or three years ago, I told my, my board, we've got to have CBD in our stores. And they said, no, 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 no CBD. And I said, we are going to make money. And you know what happened? Um, almost immediately, our sales uh, went up by 27%. Okay. And now they're very happy to have CBD in the stores. Yes, good for you. I'm for lifting that stigma, creating wealth and wellness. Why not? I agree with you. And again, thank you so much for being on High Society with Paxton Quigley. Thank you so much, Paxton. Sure. And, fro and folks, tell your friends. They can listen to this broadcast on our website, which is called paxtonquigley.com. We're a talk show, but we also listen. So feel free to get in touch with us. And also our show can be heard wherever you get your podcasts. So we're, we're out there all over the place. And also I'd like to thank our listeners for purchasing my latest suspense novel. It's called Just Try Me. It's available on Amazon, either uh, as in Kindle form or book form. And listeners, Please stay safe, wear a mask, and if you have to, stay home. We can beat this virus if we work together. I'm Paxton Quigley.